start rolling on both computers. Redundancy. Redundancy. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's good to have you. Thanks for tuning in. Today I have Andre Louis, a blind musician and producer, on the show. Hope you enjoy. No one really knows. Um, I think, well my mom seems to think that I had sight when I was a baby, but I was in an incubator and... Um, there were pads over my eyes, but I was an inquisitive child and I used to pull them off apparently, but no one noticed. So, hmm. um, I, I don't know if that was the cause of it, but my eyes actually, I have some control over them. I can move them, but I have no sight at all. So my uh, sight impairment thing is called optic disc hyperplasia or optic nerve hyperplasia. It's one of those two. Um, don't ask me how you even spell those. Today's episode, Andre talks to me about his life, you know, his influence into music and a little bit about his studio and and what he hopes to do in the future i, I tell you a funny story actually i was on a train <clears throat> and little did i know that i was staring at some person's girlfriend and it was a silly macho man he got very offended he's like what are you looking at my girlfriend i lifted up my cane i calmly sat back i put the cane back she was mortified and she just told him to shut up because i was staring at her oh my eyes was wandering you see they do that when i don't pay attention and that was the end of that. How did you get into music? Was it something from an early age? Yeah, yeah my parents bought me a, my first, uh, you know, single note keyboard when I was three, or apparently, as the story goes, and I started to play TV themes of the day on it, and then uh, just sort of progressed, really. <clears throat> I got more and more um, advanced keyboards. I grew up, and I took a few lessons, but I didn't like them, so then I basically went my own way and uh, got into the production side of things, and... Uh, live gigging and that kind of thing and it just sort of went from there really I've never really I've never had a period in my life where I stopped music for any length of time so do you play other instruments Andre yeah um it is those things I can play a bit of drums I can play percussion I like those things but you know my instrument of choice is piano or keys definitely I thought maybe Andre worked for this company who made musical instruments native instruments is the name but in fact he tells me differently and how he got involved with the company. I would like to say I do, but unfortunately that's just a dream. Um, it was very odd how that came about, right? So my wife had seen a post on Facebook, um, and it was something about Native Instruments looking for visually impaired musicians to come to the office in London to do some testing. And I responded to this post because she sent it to me, and I thought, well, that's interesting. I was only vaguely interested at that point. And they didn't get it. However... And this is the weird part. I had been recommended by another lady called Sally Zimmerman, who used to work at RNIB, and she had sent on my details. And so when I did get a response from uh, Tim, who's uh, Tim Adnett, who's product owner of Complete Control at Native, um, I thought he was responding to my email. And it was only years later, after we'd been friends for a long time at that point, that we worked out the miscommunication had happened by happenstance. Uh. And it was just one of those really weird coincidences that obviously was meant to happen, <clears throat> and I'm glad it did. So in May of 2016, um, after a bit of back and forth emailing with myself and Tim, he said, right, here's the time I'd like you to come in um, or tell you what we want you to do when you get here. So I just basically took a cab into the unknown, as it were, and I get to this office. And the first thing they do is they sit me down in front of a complete control S88 Mark I, as it was then. And they're like, have you seen this keyboard before? No. Um, check out what this thing can do. And there was a bunch of knobs on the, on, above, below the keys above the keys and below the screens and uh he said hit this key this is a browser and he taught me how to use it and i went home absolutely stunned and my mind blown and i didn't know what i was even looking at um and they said well we're very nervous to show you this because uh we've never dealt with my people before uh -huh. so is this any good i said tim it's not good it's great i think, I think <laughs> his face fell before i finished my sentence but then it i asked andre if he thought of himself as a ambassador for the blind maybe the blind music community. And he had this to say. Yeah, definitely. And I'm proud to be one as well. They didn't ask me to be one or anything, but I can safely say that they've given me a fresh start in my musical life that I wouldn't have had without it. So I have no, no qualms about being one at all. Do you have music released 
like uh, yeah of your I've own. got a bunch of instrumentals and albums and stuff all over the regular platforms any platform you think of it's probably there because I released through a single distributor and they push it to all I asked Andre about a creation he made and shared on the WhatsApp group and he had this to say You'll hear, you'll hear a lot of that from time to time. Um, a lot of it ends up on my YouTube channel as well. It's just stuff that I make, you know, when I feel like making, because I am a composer. So, yeah, that was something I made using Spitfire products only. Maybe some of the listeners already know, but if not, I am also pursuing music. And during this journey, I have learned that I have to really learn this technology thoroughly in and out and there are so many keyboard commands so many things to listen for when you're recording audio to get it right i asked andre if this was a problem for him i think some do but i don't i think maybe i don't know i don't speak for all blind people certainly but because sound is me and i've always been blind i've never not had sight so i of can course. sort of just play and listen and also play and talk at the same time i can't i don't sing and I, I commend the people. I don't. I think maybe, I, I don't know, I don't speak for all blind people, certainly, but because sound is me, and I've always been blind, I've never not had sight, so I of can course. sort of just play and listen, and also play and talk at the same time. I can't, I don't sing. And I, I commend the people that can sing and play. That is just a hell of an art form. But I, I can play and talk, and I can play and think, and play and read a book. That is to say, have like an e-book playing in my headphones while I play. That kind of thing. So it's all sort of one and the same. It's just sort of a stream of sound. <laughs> What's, um, what type of music uh, do you really enjoy uh, on the playing? I enjoy a piano. lot of jazz, but I play a lot of everything. Um, the only things I don't really play, and it's only because I'm just not in those sorts of bands, I don't play a lot of rock stuff, but I play reggae, pop, jazz, you know, R&B, neo-soul, this and that, you know? Yeah. When you're, what kind of equipment do you have in, in your studio, or if you call it that? <laughs> I do, even though it's just the living room of my house. So I'm sitting in front of right now, because this is where my mic is for my recordings and podcasts and things. I'm sitting in front of my Complete Control S61 Mark II. Um, to the right of me uh, is a mixer that doesn't come on, talk, on gigs with me. But basically, the stuff I use at home is the stuff I use on stage, apart from the mixer. So I take... An, a different version of the same keyboard. I've got two of them because I'm a greedy person. Yeah. I've got one in a bag. You know, it's a breakdown keyboard. Exactly the same keyboard, Complete Control S61 Mark II. Uh, I've got a MacBook Pro over there, and that is running Logic 1051, and uh, with a gargantuan 4 terabyte SSD connected to it with all my libraries on it. <laughs> and there's only one, one and three quarter terabytes left on that drive. Oh, wow. So I, I, I have far more libraries than cents, <laughs> far more sounds than I need. But I do keep buying. I'm a sucker for sound. and I can't help myself. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I picked up a 200 gigabyte piano because it's amazing. Uh, so it's kind of kind of hard not to uh, to love these things, you know? I have to say that this Native Instruments Complete Control S49 Mark II MIDI control keyboard that I have is amazing. And it talks back to you. It does. It, it's and that's that's it. See, I was my claim to fame is that I was the first blind person in the world to see that, and I uh, I'm very glad because I've pushed it to many many of you as a result. Um, you really have. Made, I made mean, a lot of people spend a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know that's what money's for is to be spent. Exactly to be spent. I asked Andre if he had a recommendation for sound libraries or content for my new. MIDI control keyboard and he had this to say I tell you what I recommend right now it is all the Spitfire lab stuff because it's free it'll give you about six or seven gigabytes of free content and there's NKS for it in the complete uh, Dropbox folder I tell you why there's a they have a they have a piano on that thing called soft piano and it has been used in many a Netflix and film uh, production over the last 10 years or so it's their most popular download I think to date ever Wow, that's so, it's so great it's that free. they give it away. Yeah. Do you, have you scored for any, any film? Not for film, I haven't. Um, my goal is to write for TV and, and, and film, and so that's why I got all these orchestral libraries and things. Um, you know, I might not be ever great at it, but I'd like to be good at it at least. And I, I'm just dabbling. Sorry to interrupt again, but I wanted to bring something up. I started to speak to Andre about film scoring and how someone with a 
visual disability could do it, and he expanded on it. Of course you could. There are blind people that do score for film. Uh, on the complete group itself, there's a guy called Chris Ankin, who also runs the kk-access.com website, and uh, I believe he scores for film quite often. If you want to do it, I always say do it. There's nothing stopping you. And I think a lot of times, well, I think a lot of times, especially if you are, uh, you come to b come to blindness later in life, it's like, you know, when you come <laughs> to God, when you come to blindness later in life, um, I think a lot of people will tell you, oh, this isn't possible. And the only reason they say it's not is because they don't know anyone that's done it. And I would hate people to think that that's not, that, that, that is the case. It's not the case at all. It's just that you don't know the right people. You, you're right, Andre. I, I actually feel like I have been given the opportunity to see the world in a different way. And it's, yeah. it's actually, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've spoken to others about this, but I, I, I feel like I, I'm experiencing the world in, in, in it, sometimes in, in, in a better way. <laughs> but, um, I'm not distracted by certain things, but I don't think there's necessarily a good or bad, I mean, blind or not blind or in between. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I just wanted to add that blindness has been an amazing experience, to be honest, even though how I lost my sight was very negative. And I told, I told Andre this, and he basically explained to me, well, have a listen. I think that's a great thing. You know what? If you go back and revisit any of these places, the one thing I'm going to mandate that you do is take a recorder with you because you can't see photos that don't benefit you in any way, and it's sound that speaks a thousand words, not a photograph, especially in our case. So when you go to these places, you have a recorder, you've got one in your hand anyway, it's called a smartphone, you can get nice stereo mics for the thing, and you never have to forget to remember a memory ever again. Andre had some final words and advice for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're blind or not. These days, it is easier than ever to become a bedroom producer because our computers are all powerful enough even if you had the cheapest i3 on the market or a surface tablet that was low end you could still get something on there that would allow you to make music the only thing stopping you making music is you as long as you've got a computer or a phone even a phone you can make music there's so many apps out there don't let something that is cheap stop you from achieving your dreams well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's the first time that I have used some of the skills I have learned with using Pro Tools, the digital audio workstation, to mix this session. I kind of rush stuff, but everything you heard in this episode is Andre Luis of his creation. And I just kind of mixed it in real quickly to give you a taste. Look in the description for some of his links. And until next time, this is Steve, signing out.